Today, inshallah, I'm going to take you through the journey of Extra Mile and how this concept changed my life. And I want it to change your life as well because you're going to find out that every single mile you take makes a difference. Now we start. The clicker doesn't work. Okay, we start in the we start in the nineties. It's not working, guys. Technology. All right, here we go. Yes, we start in the nineties. This good-looking young man. Yes, that was me. Once upon a time, uh, like any other young man who lived his life with no really purpose. We enjoyed ourselves, we had fun, we went to work, we came back, we went to college, came back. So I was not different from anyone else, I just cared about myself. But and then, a few years later, a few years later, something happened. This amazing creation of God, the jellyfish. I went for a swim in the beach of Oman, and I was attacked by a jellyfish. And until this moment, I'm going through the symptoms of this attack as I can't have prawns, calamari, or lobster. And uh, when I was attacked, I was vomiting for almost three months by a snake. But this time, I had to, you know, consider it seriously because this snake made me go through a coma for four days. And these four days were the changing point of my life where I decided that, you know what, this might be a, a message for me to change and start all over again. And I was lost. I didn't know where to start. And I, I didn't know what my purpose was. So I came across a prophetic tradition where the prophet, peace be upon him, says that if it is the hour before the day of judgment, and you have a plant in your hand, then if you can, grow it. And this is the moment where I realized that it doesn't matter if you do something uh, that you get the results or not. You just have to do it, and you do it for the sake of goodness. And then later on, I came across a verse in the glorious Quran where God says, compete in goodness, compete in goodness. So I said, we compete in every single thing in life. What about competing in goodness? Why don't I become number one when it comes to goodness? But I was still, it was still vague. I didn't know where to start. And I said, the best, the best place to start is home. Where this incident happened in Al Jabal Akhdar, where my dad, he is almost 70 years old, was preparing for prayers. And he was doing the ablution and he was struggling to wash his legs. And I seek the opportunity before my brothers and sisters, and I said, I'm going to compete and take that extra mile and do something that I don't have to do, something that I will not benefit materially, but I will benefit spiritually, and I will benefit as a person. And I started implementing this concept of extra mile, doing something that I don't have to do. And it is very rare today to find people who do things that they don't have to do. And I realized that I need to focus more and I need to narrow down the things that I do. There are a lot of things that you can do when it comes to extra mile. So I joined a group that is called Oman Life Makers. And this group was interested in the young people. And I found my passion with those young people because we thought that we don't have the funds to help them. But what we can do is give them education. Every single one of us knows something, one way or the other. But if we conceal this knowledge that we have to ourselves, then we are not benefiting ourselves 
and we're not benefiting anyone else. So we started giving classes for those who are less privileged, and it continued for many years. And I said, you know what? This is not enough. I have to take the extra mile. And I suggested to my friends who are with me in the group that why don't we have classes for ourselves as well? Each one, of one, each one of us has a skill in one way or another. So why don't we train ourselves as well? And we started doing that. Later on, I fell in love with the, with the kids. And I thought that this is, one, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And when it comes to deal with kids, the special moment that you have with them is they are innocent. They don't judge you by your looks. They don't judge you by your nationality. They don't judge you by your color. They don't have that. And this is so pure. And this inspired me and made me learn from them. These kids are orphans. And although they are going through calamity and difficulty of not having parents, but they always had a smile on their face. And we have every single thing in this world, but we still complain about it, and we have a frown. And then, as I got into media, uh, the radio and, and TV channels, I thought all these channels that we have in Oman, radio channels or TV channels, there is no a single program dedicated for the young people. And they are like almost a quarter of the population. And they are the leaders of the future. So I took the extra mile and I created this program called Young Leaders. And it went on for almost two years until one day, one of the, one of the students who was interviewed by me on the show I was explaining to him about drugs, and he said on air, my grandmother is a drug addict. And that was the end of the program. <laughs> so I spoke to a lot of parents when it comes to their children, and they're always complaining about this generation. And I thought, OK, if they're complaining about this generation, let me go and, and speak. Can you take a piece of paper and a pen and write down the things that you think I should improve. And I was so confident that the paper is going to be empty. After five minutes, she says, can I have an extra piece of paper? <laughs> Being in the social media platform, I realized that there are many stars out there, many celebrities. Everyone wants to be famous. Everyone is branding themselves. But I sat and I thought to myself, there are a lot of amazing people out there among the audience. They have special achievement and nobody recognized them because they are not celebrities. So I took the extra mile and I created this TV program called Potential where I invited 30 young Omanis who have brilliant achievements but nobody knows about them and they are broadcasted and you can find them on the YouTube. I was born as an artist and I practiced art for many years in school until one day one of our relatives came to, to, to our house and I was young, I was still in school and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm drawing or I'm painting. He said, this is for girls, boys don't paint. Boys play football. And that was the moment where I stopped painting for almost 25 to 30 years. And then I heard about this golden opportunity for a center for disability where the director of the center came up with the idea that they want 40 artists to paint all the walls of the center, almost 50 walls with beautiful paintings to make a difference for the children in that center. And when I heard kids or children, and I heard, I heard painting, I said, I'm back. And I joined them. And for six continuous weeks, we worked so hard to paint the walls of the center. And I urge all of you to go to Al-Khob, to the center, to see the paintings and see what the work was done in them. 
I am very, very privileged to work in a company, Oman LNG Development Foundation, which is a non-charitable organization that deals with the community, uh, corporate social responsibility. And I'm one of the team in this, uh, in this uh, organization. So our company thought that we don't have only to give money out to the community. We have to do something else. We have to go the extra mile. So they decided to conduct a training session for the volunteers in Oman. And they gathered the best of 100 volunteers and they wanted to pay someone from abroad to come and train them about voluntary work. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna take the extra mile and I'm gonna do it for free and I'm gonna train these 100 Omanis to be the best volunteers. Now, before I end today's talk, I want you to go home thinking about this that extra mile is nothing unique to me. Every one of you can take the extra mile. Every one of you in their own area, in their own speciality, can take the extra mile and you can make a difference. Don't wait for return. Don't wait someone to tell you to do something special. Think yourself and be creative and make a difference in this world and be pioneers in goodness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.